On this episode, we test the limits of linguistics. <laughs> Create cold sprites. We test the limits of entomology. Cold ebug. <laughs> And our limits are also tested. Excra! Ah, oh, hi everybody. This is Christian from Laserdefs Academy. This is the advanced schmuck tutorial episode 38, I think. Maybe 38. Let's see. Um, numbers don't mean anything to me at all. Today we are going to be tackling the collision detection system, the collision system, the collision logistics system. Um, so on the previous episode we did, uh, we established a system for, um, for like a library of animations. We established a system for like a library of enemies. Um, today we are going, we do have math that takes care of collisions already. But we need a system where we can somehow save those collision data, like collision boxes. We need to save them somehow and we need to attach them to things. Uh, we need to feed our function that takes care of collision. We need to feed it data somehow. And we need to uh, kind of find out the logistics of how the data gets stored and how it gets to, uh, to our collision detection uh, function. Let me let me sketch out some ideas that I have and and walk you through the process of how I figure out my solution. And I'm going to say it right away: the solution I'm working with today and in this in this tutorial that's not necessarily have to be the right one. We have left off the area where there's the right way of doing things. We are completely now in an area in a, in a space in in the world where there's just decisions. We're just making decisions. And sure, those decisions sometimes have advantages, sometimes they have disadvantages. It's all just, you know, different ways of doing things. And you might come up with your own way of doing things. But here is my process. Here's how I'm thinking about these things. Do let me know what you think about them. You know, this gets serious when Christian whips out the <laughs> The paint, right? The paint. All right, so here is uh, option number one. So you know how we have MSPR, right? We have this MSPR um, where we have a whole bunch of sprites in this, right? And each sprite has X and Y and width and height and OX and OY and FX. Uh, like the effects, oh man, those, <laughs> I'm, I'm an expert at drawing uh, an X. I'm an expert at handwriting with, with my mouse. Okay, so we have this system. One idea would be to just add collision detection data to each and every sprite. Now, just like an aside, I'm gonna open up a box here. What kind of data do we actually have to store for the collision detection? Well, we need We need a, it's going it's to be collision boxes. We're going to do a boxes based collision detection. We already wrote the function for this, you remember. We're going to need a width of the box. We're going to need a height of the box. And we need the top left corner of the box, which, you know, the, the box will be attached to an object, will be like an enemy or like a bullet or like a um, uh, player. So that player, that the thing will already have an X and Y coordinates. But you see that the box will, the top left corner of that box will not necessarily be at, you know, at the position where that thing is. So we actually need an OX, like an offset X, an offset Y, right? We need four, four pieces of data to describe a collision box. These four pieces of data. So you might be thinking, like, let's take these. And let's put them, let's just append them to each and every uh, sprite. So we're going to have CX, uh, CY, collision X, collision Y, collision width, collision height. Uh, I'm not going to do that. It is possible you can do that. I am not going to do that. Why am I not going to do that? Am I crazy? The reason why I'm not doing this is we're going to create a whole bunch of additional data that way. Uh, we don't need a collision box on each and every sprite in our game, right? Uh, so just um, adding this capability of, of, of creating collision boxes to each sprite in the game would just create a ton of data and we might 
run out of run out of space elsewhere. For example, there's like a compressed size, and we call that compressed size in Pico 8, where you know all the data, all of the code that needs, will be compressed and then saved, <laughs> and then once that compressed size of your all your data, all your code um, exceeds a certain limit, Pico 8 says no. And I'm worried that this, this additional data here, this additional data, um, because you know this gets applied to every single sprite in our game, that will just really explode our compressed size. Um, you also, again, because we don't need collision detection for each and every sprite, uh, we will have animations. For example, we have a UFO that is turning, right? We have the, like the, right now the animation where the UFO is spinning, and for this UFO really the collision box doesn't change there is an animation playing but all of the collision boxes for each frame of the animation is the same what kind of game would we need this solution for um for example in a fighting game in a fighting game that might be a good idea because in a fighting game you will have a sprite animation where it's like there's a punch right and when um, the punch is happening you know each frame of that animation might have a different collision data assigned to it because you know when your fist is here the collision is going to be here when your fist is extended the collision is going to be there your characters your sprites change their collision as they're being animated so in this case yes you might want to add a collision data to each individual frame of the animation in our case uh, our collision boxes will roughly speaking stay static so this is superfluous a superfluous solution what is the advantage here uh, we kind of already have a pretty nifty um, sprite editor and, it's, and it kind of makes sense because in the sprite editor we kind of already see the preview of the sprite and so forth. So it kind of makes sense in that sprite editor to, uh, to add the collision data. So there is some advantages and disadvantages here. Um, let's move on and let's come up with some, some other solutions. So this was solution number one. Solution number two that I was thinking about is, you know how we have now the n, n lib. Right, we have the nlib data, right? We have the nlib. And here we have like the any, uh, any s, like animation speed. Uh, we have the uh, brain. We have the uh, HP, right? We have all this information pertaining to a certain enemy. So why don't we just why don't we just add the collision box data right there? Just right there. Every each enemy will have collision data, box data. Good solution, not a bad solution. I would um, support that solution. There is two problems with that solution, two problems, Twix. Um, this is really just like focused on enemies. This is a collision data solution focused on enemies. Uh, and we have other things that have collision data. So we have at least two things that have collision data. Uh, one is the uh, our player ship, and the other one is the bullets. Those two things have collision data, and this thing, putting the collision data directly into the enemy library, won't solve these other things. Uh, we could establish the bullets as enemies, but I don't know, that just doesn't make sense. Uh, you know, with a player, we can get around that because it's just, there's just one player. But with the bullets, really, there's a whole bunch of bullets. There's going to be enemy bullets, player bullets. There's going to be a whole bunch of stuff that will have collision data. And then how, where do we go? How are we going to put collision data there? I mean, maybe we're going to, we find a way if we create like a bullet system. But, oh, man. It's just like, it seems like that, that doesn't really solve. That solves the collision just for one type of object, but not for the whole the other types of objects that are out there. Also, we would have to maybe expand our enemy editor and I mean, we could do that, but, but uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I like it, but I, I, don't, I don't love it. I don't love it. That's solution. Uh, solution number three or uh, the, the thought number three that I had. How about we create a separate collision library, like a call lib, right? Um, <laughs> We're going to create a, a whole new text file that will just have collisions, right? We can do that. And that will just contain this kind of stuff. It's going to be kind of like an MSPR, but just for collisions. Absolutely possible. Maybe, maybe that's actually the right way of doing things because then like here in enemy library would just have like a number, the collision would be, it would be like just collision. 
uh, and then it would be just like a number like two, and then it will just look up the collision data from that collision um, library. That's totally cool. Um, the problem here is obviously that we have to create like a specific dedicated another editor just for collisions, which seems a bit like, I don't know, it's just like an additional step that I, maybe there's a way of we can avoid this, but probably the right way of doing things generally. And then uh, solution number four, solution number four is, let us think about this. Uh oh, got some box here. Anyway, um, let us think about this. Let us think about the collision. Let us think about those four values. Have you noticed something about those four values? Those four values are kind of similar to those four values that we have here, right? I mean, we don't have, a, oh, a, we have not X and Y, but otherwise, like the sprites, the sprites are already covering all of the data that we need to have associated with the collisions. There is some superfluous data like X and Y and FX and NX, although FX and NX are optional. So that's actually not really necessary, just like X and Y is superfluous. But otherwise, the sprites are actually already covering all of the information that we need to store uh, pertaining to the collision boxes. So the third solution is sprites are sprites are collision boxes. That's the, the fourth idea that I had here. So we're basically gonna dump, we're gonna write the information about collision boxes directly into the sprite array, into the MSPR array. And there's gonna be some sprites that are not designed to be drawn to the screen. They're just designed to hold collision data for objects for like uh, enemies or bullets or the player ship. And then just like here, just like here, we have like in the, in the idea two, I mean, let me mark the screen. Just like in idea two, whenever you have an object, that object will just store a number. Um, maybe there's gonna be a value called call. That will store a number and that number will reference a sprite that is not supposed to be a sprite, but instead it's supposed to be a collision box. The only thing that we need to keep in mind is that we need to expand, probably need to expand uh, the um, SPR did. We're gonna have to expand this sprite did um, because we maybe want to have a comparable way of designing these special sprites that are actually collisions. But otherwise, otherwise, we're kind of like, I kind of like this solution a lot because it repurposes already existing systems rather than establishing whole new systems from scratch. So yeah, these are my thoughts. I think I'm gonna, uh, we're gonna uh, use number four. Uh, and you know, yes, this has one slight disadvantage in that uh, we are storing a little bit superfluous data, all of the collision, each individual collision box would have an X and Y associated with it that's completely meaningless. So yeah, maybe in the future when we notice that you know the data is, is getting out of hand, maybe we might actually switch to solution number three. But for now, I'm gonna try solution four. All right, let's just do like a to-do list. What do we have to do to make this work? Um, well, first of all, I want to just visualize this. Visualize call data. I want to be able to associate, well, first of all, maybe before we do that, associate. Um, sprites with call, or let's 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 maybe let's let's put it, let's let's just establish a call value for all this stuff. Then I just want to visualize this call data. Then I want to uh, create 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 calls, create call sprites, um, and maybe like cre cre create create <laughs> create call sprites. Um, and maybe also expand editor. And then uh, we need to test collisions, right? 
these are the things that we need to go through these other steps. And maybe we need to expand the, the editor before we create the collision sprites. So maybe the order will change a little bit. But yeah, let's let's just go for it. First of all, let us create the collision values for the different objects that we have. Right, so for example, in uh, this is the enemy, right? And here we can just establish collision equals. <laughs> now, I also have to rem remember that we actually, for this for this to-do list, we also probably want to add, uh, add calls to nlib. We want to store the collision data of an enemy in the library. So that's also something that we definitely want to do at some point. But for now, let us um, let us just dump any kind of collision data. Let's just put sprite number one. That is, I think, the spaceship. Uh, no, actually, that's a mirrored spaceship, right? No, it's going to be fine. Um, just add collision uh, sprite number one as collision data for the ship, and then we're going to you know iterate a little bit on this. Okay. So we have collision one. Uh, we have collision data associated with the enemies let's do collision data associated with the bullets as well so here are the shots for example let's put a call in here as well and again for now just like temporary temporary stuff and then um yeah and then here maybe when we created the player bullet we're gonna also have a collision associated with it okay so now i want to just see the differences, right? I just want to see, visualize the collision data. I just want to see something that is collided. Or no, no, no. Actually, what I want to see is that collision box that I created there. I just like want to, when I draw an enemy or a, any kind of object, and if it has collision data, then I want to see that collision data. Uh, we're going to create a little debug thing. We're going to do like call debug. Uh, we're going to set it to true. Cold ebug. <laughs> Okay, so when we're drawing an object, we, that's actually kind of neat because we have lots of things that are being drawn this way. So now we can do like if call debug, then this is temporary, by the way. This is completely temporary, right? We, we, we're we going to delete this eventually. Uh, but for now, uh, for the uh, time that we're developing this, we want to keep this around. Uh, so if there is a call debug thing thing and obj, uh, onj obj dot um, call then so in this case I do want to do an uh, msp msprc collision uh, we're gonna have to write that function we don't have that function just yet I'm gonna write I'm gonna draw that and we are going to draw that in, at this location. Right. If there is a collision, uh, if the, the debug f is on, and there's collision data associated with that object, we're gonna we're gonna we want to draw that. So now we uh, it's all about drawing that. We're just gonna copy MSPR, and we're gonna do MSPRC. Right. Uh, everything is gonna be the same. Everything is going to be the same. Uh, we do not care about any FX data. We do not care about any NX. Uh, our collision boxes are not going to be using any sprite stacking. It's, they're not going to be using any mirroring, anything like this. Not interested in any of those. It's just like a box, right? Um, so we're not doing an SPR as well. Uh, what we want to do is a, a rect. Just a rect. Um, and it's gonna be, um, this is gonna be the X position, the top left corner, the bottom left corner. Uh, no, the, this is the top left corner. <laughs> These are both top left corners. And now we need to calculate the bottom left corner. So that's gonna be top left corner um, plus underscore width minus one <laughs> and plus underscore height minus one. So um, yeah, and then maybe we want to set a color. Uh, let us do like a random, um, let, let's just do like a random eight, 14, eight, 14, 15, eight, 14, 15. Just like a random color from those three. So it's kind of flashing a little bit. Something like this. Uh, let's see if this works. It 
totally works. It totally works, guys. It's just friggin' works. Isn't that amazing? I'm, I'm kind of blown away that it works. <laughs> Did not expect that it works. Right, so now we see like the, our bogus, um, bogus collision stuff associated with um, uh, like drawn there. We need to create like the proper collision box in a second. But for now, something I'm also missing is uh, the ship is not also not happening. So because the ship is kind of like its own special thing. And, you know, we're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. We thought maybe our ship needs to be an object, right? We, we're rapidly approaching that, that moment where we may, might turn our ship into an object. But for now, um, I'm just going to copy this code out and I'm going to put it in here. Um, I'm going to do a P, that, that P set here and here as well. So if this is this is happening, then um, draw at px, py, and again, the collision box is going to be number one. We're going to figure out what the collision boxes for the different things going to be later on. So yeah, here's our collision box for our ship. Here's the collision boxes for, for the bullets. And here is the collision box for the enemy. Oh! And we have explosion, obviously. So we have the collision value. We um, visualize the, the collision data. Let us just create a bunch of collision sprites that we can put in all these different places. I'm gonna save this. I'm gonna load SPR dit. Uh, load sprite dit. Uh, okay, let's run this. Right. <sighs> And, and you can already see, this is kind of tough, right? Because, man, okay. So with the, with the, okay, so with the bullets, right? I feel like this should be co the collision box of the bullet or this, not sure which one of those. Um, let's, let's go, I'm gonna actually write this down. Okay, so I have my notes here. Um, let's go calls um, bullet, uh, no, 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 shot. Uh, that's gonna be let's let's say that's gonna be eight. Um, let, now let's pick something. Oops. Let's pick something for the enemy. I think for the enemy we can also use just the, the sprite of the enemy. So let's just do um, enemy. I'm just gonna reuse already existing uh, sprites for this for now. Um, later on we can maybe do like custom sprites. Um, okay, so we need bullets, um, shots, bullets, uh, enemies, and uh, the actual player. Uh, bullets we maybe don't need right now. Not necessarily, because we don't see any bullets on the screen right now. Uh, I'm more interested in um, especially the, the player ship, right? Um, so the player ship we actually don't have. And this is now, the, I think, a good moment to uh, maybe use the player ship to actually create the player ship collision box. Right. So how are we going to do this? Let us let us create a new sprite. Uh, and as we said, X and Y actually don't matter. The width is going to be two. The height is going to be two. Um, o X is going to be zero, and O Y is going to be one. I think. Um, now let me pick some place where there's actually some pixel data to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I just like picked some data so we can see some kind of preview and we already can tell that this is not ideal. We would love to see like a sprite that already exists and be able to like draw out the box that is through the collision, right? So it's kind of like we maybe, maybe need some additional functionality here that allows us to load in different sprite and say like, okay, now I'm designing the box to that sprite, the collision box to that sprite. Something that maybe comes up in the next episode, but for now I just want to see this, this, um, I want to create like this collision box. I think this is good, this is good. So now let's get out, 28, right? So it looks like this. Um, I'm gonna write this down, ship 28. So I have to imagine if this little box, if that's superimposed on top of our ship, then we should get that thing that we were talking about where, you know, just like the dark part of the cockpit, just that part is the collision box. Um, to satisfy, you know, all of the, all of the um, bullet hell affectionados, the collision box are gonna be tiny on our ship. And then let us then export. Okay. 
And then let us load cow shmup. Let us run this. Okay, and then in the gameplay in and enemies, we set the enemy a collision is going to be 18. And we set the bullet collision, in, I mean the shot collision, that is going to be 8. 8. And then uh, we'll be drawing the drawing the actual ship that is going to be uh, 28. Right? Let's save this. Let's run. Yeah. Uh, something is wrong with the enemy collision. Also, the bullet collision is also wrong. That makes sense. Um, so, <laughs> so the bullet collision is wrong because we're mirroring it. Uh, and also the, the ship collision, the player ship collision, the enemy collision is also wrong because we're mirroring it. Right, so when we're doing the MS MSPRC, we can say like if fx equals 2, then we're going to just double the width because then we, that means that our sprite has been, um, it has a symmetry effect applied to it, so it's actually double wide. Um, we, can, we can maybe apply that little, little hack that will get us going for now, right? So if fx equals 2, then uh, underscore w um, multiplied equals 2. Yeah, so now the collision, that collision look box looks correct and the collision box of our shots also looks correct. Good. Right, so actually there's a, an important step that we actually not, not created uh, here as we actually make collisions work. <laughs> we actually haven't done that yet, so let's do that now. All right, we created collision sprites, good. I guess test collisions, that's actually test collisions maybe to some extent, ah, whatever. Let me see how currently collisions are working. So uh, this is now where where the logistics uh, come into play. So here's the collision between enemies and shots, right? And here's like this huge, 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 huge collision function, right? This collision function here, this is this huge collision function. And then if that's true, then, then stuff is happening. So we're going to create a new collision function. We're going to comment this out. Don't worry, the it's, it's, it's going to be fine. Uh, we're going to create a new collision function. If del me and call to, are you ready for this? So enemy is E, shot is S. like this. We're going to create like a function that collides two objects with each other. And then, you know, the collision function will grab the information from the call data inside this object by itself. That simplifies this code here, which is repeated three times, right? Uh, and the complexity is shifted over to the actual collision function and the logistics behind it. Now it's time to actually write that collision function. So we're going to base, obviously base it off our call1 function here. So it's going to be call2. Uh, we're going to call O1, object1, and object2. Or let's, let's call it OA and OB, object A and object B, right? Okay, okay, okay. So we need to grab all this data and feed it into, into our little helper variables here. So first, how are we going to grab this data? Well, we need to, um, let me think about this. Let's, it's kind of like the same function that we have here when we're doing the MSPR. So why don't we just um, unpack? Why don't, why don't we just unpack this stuff? So we do something like this. Unpack uh, MSPR. Uh, MSPR first from the first object, first object collision, right? Then second object, object B collision. We unpack all this data. Now we don't actually need a lot of stuff. We don't need NX. We still need FX for that little bug here, but I'm going to actually do like a note here uh, FX delete. Uh, the final version won't actually support fx um, and I'm going to put it into goal so we don't forget it. fx delete. 
Um, right. So fx, uh, ox, uh, x and y are actually don't meaningless. We don't really care about x and y. Um, width and height, we don't definitely care about ox and oy, we care about. Uh, there is also one more thing, and that is going to be those two variables are now called the same. So we want to maybe rename them a little bit. So we're going to do like a, b, 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 a, a. Boy box. <laughs> That's nice. Okay, so now we are grabbing all the information from the collision sprites that are associated with our two objects. And then we're dumping them into a whole bunch of helper variables. And now we need to like sort the different helper variables. So for example, here, um, the top left corner of A is going to be uh, 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 oa dot x minus a o x. Uh, just want to make sure that this is correct. Uh, let's go to here minus o x. Yeah, that's good. Uh, we can also replicate this for b already. The um, y position is going to be the same, uh, but with y. Oops. And we re re repeat this for b as well. You know, this is a bit, <laughs> a bit of a mind-numbing thing, but you know, bear with me. Bear with me. It's going to be fine. Right. So the right and bottom is going to be just like the left plus um, a, a with minus 1. And this is going to be um, a top height minus 1. All right, again, this minus 1, right? And then... We're going to paste these things in here and we're going to switch A for B. Like so. Um, there's one little thing that concerns me. Um, this, this X, right? This could be an integer, like comma value and we kind of want to floor it to integers. So let us just floor it. So let's do FLR. 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 Like that. So yeah, again, we are grabbing all grabbing our collision uh, sprites from the two different objects that we want to collide with. We're dumping all this stuff into a whole bunch of like little helper variables and then we take those variables and also the data from the object, this the x and y position of the object, and we kind of like smoosh them around in a, in a salad and put the results into our another set of helper variables and then we do the math with those variables. Kind of like a bit of a two-step process because first we're getting things into helper variables and then we put them in different different helper variables and then we do the math. This could be optimized for sure. Um, but for now, I'm just really concerned about uh, making it work at all. Now we're going to actually use the same trick that we used here when we drew the, uh, we're drawing this thing when, when fx is 2, then we're going to multiply the width. And again, we're going to delete that in a second, but yeah, for now that's okay. So if afx if a f x then a w and then if so if the oh, collision box a is is mirrored then we double the width and if collision b is mirrored then we also double the width of that second collision box okay again but that's probably going to get deleted mm, but um, for now we're using like these collision boxes here right so technically I think we are already seeing the collision the text the collision at work here. I think this is the collision here, right? This is the we are already doing this. This is call two already working. It's just working from the, like without any problems whatsoever. This is kind of blowing my mind <laughs> to be honest. 
Yeah, it's just cool too. It's just it's just already working. Ah, isn't that nice? Isn't that really nice? But alas, we are now entering a bit of a problematic situation. Because you see, that really works really great when we're colliding the enemies with the shots. That's cool. Uh, but we also he have here a collision thing with the enemies and the ship. And that doesn't quite work, right? That with the ship is not an object, right? So, ooh, mm, how are we going to do that? And also the ship with bullets of the enemy bullets, that's also not really working because again, the ship is not an object. So we kind of have to, we kind of have to go back to that problem where we need to create an object for the ship. It's, it's kind of like, it's been long overdue. We kind of have to go there. It makes sense in a lot of ways. Um, so yeah, in the start game, let's, let's create a, um, PSPR, player sprite, maybe, or maybe ship SPR. Let's go maybe ship SPR. Do we have a ship SPR already? Oh, we already have a ship SPR, but do we need it? Yeah, we need the ship sprite. Okay, we can't use, <laughs> okay, we're not gonna use ship ship SPR. Let's go PSPR, a player sprite. Um, we're gonna set this to, well, there's gonna be an X, equals something, uh, there's gonna be a Y. Um, there is gonna be an SPR, or let's go, let's call it an S. And there's gonna be a call. And that's gonna be something that we're gonna set to. Um, mm, 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 28, we said it was 28. Like this, right? I'm not sure if we're gonna need the S, that's the sprite. I'm thinking of uh, replacing a ship SPR with this. But I'm sure if this will actually get, get us anywhere. Let's remove it for now. Let's just like do something like this. So this is gonna be the player sprite. And now in the in update function? Yeah, let's let's put it in update function. So when we're updating the position of the of the ship, uh, what we're gonna do here is uh, PSPR.x equals PX. Let's go, let's floor it. Um, PSPR.y equals PY. You know what, PSPR dot, um, so how are we doing this? So pre, when we're drawing the objects, I'm thinking about how, if we can maybe use the same function to draw things. Uh, well, whatever, nah, it's, it's fine, it's fine. We don't need to save the, the, the sprite in the object. I think we don't need that actually. It's, it's fine to be just make it like this. Um, all I want, want to update in this thing is just the X and Y position of, the, of the, the ship inside the object so we can dump that into the collision uh, uh, function. Maybe we're gonna do some logistics shenanigans later on if we see good opportunities. For now, I just want to do this. All right, so when we doing the debug, now I actually want to draw that object instead. So, well, hmm. I mean, that probably won't change much. We're just gonna grab the information directly from the object. So, uh, I, ideally I would maybe change the player object so I can do like just draw OBJ on that one. And the problem is like the draw OBJ also has like an animation happening, right? Oh, I know how to, I'm gonna do that. You know what? We're gonna do it like this. We're gonna set the H to zero. There's gonna be just always H zero. And there's always gonna be an any like this. So here's where we're gonna save the frame. It's just gonna be one frame animation for our, our PSPR thing. Yeah, let, let's do that like this. So um, our goal is, our goal is when we're drawing the player, is what I'm thinking. When we're drawing the player, I just want to be like, draw OBJ like I had it here. Draw OBJ and then PSPR. That's what I, that's what I want as a result. And all the other stuff I don't care really about. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then I even don't need the debug because that will just automatically take care of the debug stuff. That, that's the dream, that's the dream. It will this dream come true? Who knows? Um, let's put a three in, in that uh, for now. So yeah, it, it, it works, yeah. 
<laughs> it works, the dream came true. The only thing that we need to do is whenever we're updating the player's sprite, we want to write this into this, this uh, player object in, in there. We, it's kind of a bit of a hack, but, but it's a good hack. It's a good hack to have. Um, so let me go in an update function where we do the ship SPR, right? This is the ship as sprite. Um, and then, ah, yeah, here, here, here is the actual, actual code that, 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 that calculates the sprite, player sprite. So we can actually write this psbr.ani1 equals bloop. And then we dump all this, this function here that calculates, you know, the exact frame from that, uh, from that, um, from the five frames that we have for our um, banking animation for our player sprite, this calculates that. And we just dump this into as the one frame of our animation. Uh, and then the draw obj function will just draw that animation of one frame. And it's just always gonna be the frame that we need. Right, and so let's see if this even works. Yeah, it totally works. Now we have a little banking happening. Okay, so now after we made this change, now we can actually do the collision uh, with the player as well. Ah, I forgot one thing. Uh, we need to take care of <laughs> X scroll. Always go gonna be a problem. But for now, let's let's just do the the other collision detection. Right. So uh, where are we doing the collisions? Update game. Okay. So yeah, yeah. So this is the collision. Um, here's another collision here. That's collision between um, the player and enemies. So we're gonna do like call to e um, um, p s p r e, right? And if that's happening, big collision. So let's call. Let's say debug one. Uh, is it one? How many debugs do we have? Yes. Uh, what? Ah, there's a then missing. Uh, we have th um, three debugs, so the fourth one is gonna be yes. And otherwise, uh, oops. So it's gonna be yes, but otherwise there's gonna be a no. Just wanna see if this, this is colliding with enemies. Um, and then immediately we can also do this here again. We're going to comment this out because we don't need that anymore. That's gonna, that's old way of doing collisions, and the new way of doing collisions is cool and, and nice. It's going to be called two, and it's going to be um, ship versus bullets. So it's going to be p call comma b. No, no, not p call p s p r comma b. That's good. Yeah, and let's try that. Uh, then. All right, so first, there's no collision. There's collision now. Oh, there's still collision now. See, there's still collision here. But that might be because of the, yeah, that's probably because of the X scroll. X scroll! Okay, so now we need to also decalculate the X scroll. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking just doing like a true in here. Um, so we're not gonna add a third parameter to our collision two function that will undo the X scroll basically. So X S C R. And so I'm gonna do like an if statement, if X S C R then, uh, and then in this case, we're gonna go, um, that will only apply to the first entry. So we're gonna go I X minus equal uh, X S C R, the X scroll. Is that, is that, is that how we, is that how we, yeah, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's try that. No, maybe we have to add it. <laughs> maybe it's plus. Oh. Hmm. Oh, A axis doesn't really matter. A O X. Uh, no, actually, huh. You know what? Let's do ternary here. So we're gonna do like a plus. X scroll and um, X uh, SCR and X scroll 
or zero. Like this. Because so as I said, the AX and BX, these are like data of the sprite, collision sprite. And we said, look, these don't matter actually. These are just like bogus um, data that we just like carry over because we are reusing sprites for collision boxes. Um, so changing these will actually don't, doesn't really make any difference. Um, so yeah, this actually doesn't matter. What we do want to have is kind of like tweak the actual X position of the top left corner. And for that, we're going to use this ternary here. Let's see if that works. So maybe it's going to be minus. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, this totally works now. So you can see this is no. Um, this no, this is yes. So yeah, this is precise collision. This is no. And we are now hugging the box. This is now yes. This is no. This is yes. This is precise collision box. This is a precise collision box. Uh, we don't need to uh, account for X scroll when we're colliding the bullets, the player shots with the enemies, because both are affected by X scroll equally. The only problem is that our player ship and the bullets, the enemy bullets, and our player ship and the enemies are affected by X scroll differently. So that's why we need to do the X scroll <laughs> fix in here. <laughs> I'm not sure if I need the parentheses, by the way, uh, but I'm just gonna. Keep it out of the way, just, just to make sure. Good. This was a long episode, but let's move on to the dog zone. That's right, the dog zone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, predictably, the dog zone is going to be, we made the collision effect the detection work. We established a collision detection system. It's a bit of a hack of a collision detection system, but, you know, we did a lot of work. We did a lot of work. Um, here, maybe our sh ship needs to be an object. Uh, it is an object already now. We made our collisions work. The next step, expand the editor. That is going to be the task for the doggy zone. Come up with tools, with uh, UI, with, with features for the um, uh, sprite dit editor, for the sprite editor that allows us to easily define collision boxes for other things. Uh, using the editor. And now we're gonna move on to the part that is happening at the end of the episode where I say a big, big, big thank you and a huge shout out to the people who are supporting this show on coffee.com. Yeah, there's a huge number of people who are supporting, who are making this show possible on coffee.com slash laziness. And you, if you are not doing it yet, you can become one of those people. Also, um, and so I wanted to read out some comments and here is like a very topical comment by Turtle Quitty from episode 25. Uh, if you just treated the camera as a camera, you'd have to save yourself so much trouble with collisions, make the player actually exist in the same world and not some free-floating entity outside, and you will have easy collisions for free. Um, so I think uh, for what Turtle Quitty is referring to is the fact that, um, again, the X scroll is affecting our player ship differently from the rest, and that's a totally valid comment. It kind of seems like we are making our life very difficult by... Um, by you know turning the cap like moving the camera by X scroll when we're drawing the enemies, but then resetting it to zero just to draw the, the player sprite. Why don't we just put everything in the world and just like move the camera with X scroll once and do the collision detection very simple that way? This is a good good point. Um, you could do that. And there's two reasons why I'm not doing this. Reason number one is that. Um, my experience is that when you use camera movement that is working in tandem with player movement, so the player is moving around and then you're also scrolling the camera, something that can easily happen is that, you know, what we already had at the beginning, a type of um, cobblestoning where, you know, the subpixel values of the camera movement are going to be different from the subpixel value of your player's position and then the camera and the player will, will kind of cobble against each other. And the other reason, the second reason why I'm doing this is we made sure that our player is has like this nice and very polished uniform movement um, and if we put the player in, in, in the world and then move the camera as the player is moving around, you actually also mess around with the movement. For example, sideways movement will be actually slower than vertical movement because when you're moving sideways, the camera is actually moving with you. So it's, you're actually not moving as much as fast sideways. And so you will get like this oval shaped 
movement radius, where the sideways movement is not as fast, so we have to counteract it by making the sideways movement faster. It just like creates like a nightmare scenario. We made, we put a lot of effort into making these uh, player animations look nice and good, and so we want to keep those um, uh, the player position in screen space that is not affected by by camera scroll, and everything else is going to be affected by camera scroll. This is my solution here, um, but if you can totally try to put everything into into the world space and let me know how that worked out. Yeah, really good question by Turtle Quitty there. Um, so yeah, we are in the middle of doing the collision detection stuff. Now we have to do some uh, cleanup stuff. We need to uh, expand the editor and do the like, hookup to the uh, player enemy library. See that? Right, so we are now uh, in the middle of it. We created beautiful collision detection, collision um, box system. We need to just expand the editor a little bit and maybe do the hookup to the enemy library. But that's something that comes up on the next episode. See you next time around, guys. Bye-bye.